Good day everyone. I am Ivan, the moderator for this webinar. I welcome everyone to today's webinar which is Understand and Apply ISO New Climate Change Requirements. I want to introduce our presenter for today, Bill Levinson. Bill Levinson PE is the principal of Levinson Productivity Systems PC. He is also the author of several books on quality, productivity and management of which the most recent is Reshore Production Now. I would now like to hand over the floor to the speaker. Over to you Bill. Good afternoon and thank you for coming. This is on how to address ISO's new climate change requirements. It covers some general principles uh, people can use to address these new requirements. Okay, overview. The International Accreditation Forum and ISO have published a communique that supports the London Declaration on Climate Action. Key learning objectives know that ISO standards have been amended to include climate-related issues. Uh, climate change is important, but not urgent. What are the new requirements? As I mentioned earlier, the actual stated purpose of the London Declaration is to combat climate change, and there's a commitment by ISO to achieve the climate agenda by 2050. Det Norsk Veritas, they're a, a well-known uh, ISO certification body adds that climate-related requirements apply to all type uh, A ISO management system standards, some of the most miller of which are, of course, ISO 9001 for quality, ISO 14001 for environmental management systems, uh, occupational health and safety, and energy management systems. This is the addition to Clause 4.1 regarding context of the organization. The organization shall determine whether climate change is a relevant issue. Addition to Clause 4.2 regarding interested parties, relevant interested parties can have requirements related to climate change. IATF 16949 is the automotive counterpart to ISO 9001. It's more extensive than ISO 9001. The new requirements fortunately do not require decarbonization, efforts to fight climate change, or indeed anything other than consideration of climate change in the context of the management system, and that's where we're going to focus. Important but not urgent comes from the Eisenhower priority matrix. Now, from a management perspective, there's something called walking one's talk. In other words, if one says something, uh, actions speak a lot louder than words. There's all Latin, uh, qui, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, qui bono, who benefits. Sustainability has three legs, societal, environmental, and economic. It has to meet all three of those tests or else it's not sustainable. When done properly, it's entirely compatible with bottom line performance. I'm going to talk for a moment about direct air capture, which seeks to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Okay, with direct air capture, where they extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, enables the sale of carbon offsets. Okay, why is direct air capture a relatively poor idea? That's a picture of Fritz Haber, who enabled us to get nitrogen directly from the air. Okay, here's a direct air capture plant with tree from the South Pacific, uh, such as New Guinea. Another perspective, this is from Chemical and Engineering News. They're using geothermal energy for direct air capture to pump the carbon dioxide into the ground. So the recommendation is if supply chain partners express wishes or similar requirements, re remember they say relevant interested parties may have requirements. No amount of Paris agreements, London declarations, and so on can stop the climate from doing whatever it wants. If we look at the history of the world, this is from about 100 million years ago, and the Great Lakes and New York Finger Lakes were once were created by glaciers, and obviously primitive humans had no control over these climate events been related to the collapse of the Laurentide ice sheet. So again, the humans of that era had no power whatsoever to alter the climate. So the takeaway so far is climate change is a fact of nature. Nature is going to do whatever it wants. However, it doesn't mean we should not do anything. We might not be able to stop climate change, but we can adapt to it by re recognizing and managing the risks. Talking points for supply chain partners, relevant interested parties. 
The next step is to understand and recognize energy waste. The, a very key takeaway, we cannot remove it if we don't know what's there. The cost accounting system is designed to comply with IRS regulations for tax reporting and also the Securities and Exchange Commission for filing financial reports. There's something called the material and energy balance from freshman or sophomore chemical engineering says that everything that goes into a process including energy and consumables as well as stock has to come out either as saleable product or waste. Food waste benefits nobody. ISO 50001 includes an energy gap analysis which compares how much energy a job should use. Pay attention to everything, not only to product or service realization processes, Department of Energy Better Plants Program, Industrial Assessment Centers, and Superior Energy Sources. Thing is leadership in energy and environmental design for sustainable buildings. Okay, in summary, wasted energy represents costs and therefore higher prices, lower wages, and lower returns on investment. It doesn't do anything for anybody. Supply chains have numerous risks to continuity of operations. The following risks are not climate related, but require consideration. Okay, what, do, what does climate change have to do with the Panama Canal? Henry Ford had roughly 100 years ago contingency plans to reroute rail shipments in case, in case a flood washed out a rail bridge. Uh, tornadoes, they actually did have a batch of tornadoes. Extreme weather is 2024's top supply chain risk. Another thing to reduce, to mitigate risks is future trading. They now have weather futures to mitigate risks associated with weather. Okay, summary, IATF 16949 requires contingency plans to ensure continuity of operations. Okay, a checklist, things to consider as what are our contingency plans. That is, instead of saying, do we have contingency plans, what are our relevant interested parties re requirements related to to climate change, what is our process for identification and removal of energy wastes from our supply chain, how do we reuse, recycle, re repurpose material waste from our operations. Okay, this is not by any means an exhaustive list, but it's meant to be a starting point. The key takeaways are that climate is indeed relevant if it can affect continuity of operations, and we've seen a lot of ways it can. And also, removal of energy and material waste from the supply chain benefits everybody involved and also reduces carbon emissions. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Bill. That concludes the session for today. And thank you, everyone, for participating. And you may all disconnect now. Have a great day ahead.